So get this, there was a big decision made in the Alex Jones verdict, the trial that's been going around with the Sandy Hook parents, the victims of the children that were killed in the Sandy Hook school shooting that happened in uh, Connecticut in 2012, that Alex Jones deemed it was a hoax, he deemed it was a false flag attack, that there were crisis actors, he claimed that it was a uh, scenario driven out that it was supposed to be an attack on the second amendment so on and so forth um you know alex jones says a lot of crazy things a lot of crazy things sometimes good sometimes bad you know i disagree with him but he's still he's still a person i you know i respect that he admires and admire that he's able to speak his mind and opinion objectively but uh well there's interesting uh uh decision decision that came around with the the verdict of the uh trial here so the new york times wrote this article uh alex jones ordered to pay sandy hook victim families nearly a billion dollars a billion dollars a jury in connecticut awarded damages to the families of eight victims killed in the 2012 shooting and an fbi agent who responded to the scene so it says the families and their lawyers sat in stunned silence as the court, court clerk read one by one the sums awarded each of the 15 plaintiffs in the case. After court was adjourned, they hugged one another quietly, weeping. The large re- award went to Robbie Parker, who received $120 million for years of on his uh for years on his InfoWars show and website. Mr. Jones singled out Mr. Parker whose daughter Emily died at Sandy Hook. As an actor, those televised tribute to Emily a day after her death was disgusting. Mr. Parker, who has endured online abuse, harassment, and death threats since, since, formed the centerpiece of the Connecticut case. Every day in that courtroom, we got up on the stand and we told the truth, he said. Telling the truth shouldn't be so hard and it shouldn't be so scary, Mr. Parker added. In a, nod, in a nod to Mr. Jones's followers, for anyone that still chooses to listen to that man, just ask yourself, what has he ever given you? In all likelihood, Mr. Jones did not have the money to pay Wednesday's award. In August, a forensic economist estimated that Mr. Jones's empire... I love how they throw the word empire in there. Um, yeah, I get it. He has, he has a popular podcast show... He has the InfoWars, you know, entertainment, uh, this media company that he has. I wouldn't consider it an empire, though. I wouldn't consider it an empire unless Mr. Jones, unless Alex Jones um, has different InfoWars in different countries. And he he's occupying, you know, all these different territories, he's spreading InfoWars around the world. Uh, I, I don't consider it an empire. Maybe I'm just nitpicking on that word. Um, was worth a maximum of $270 million. Whew. But that same month, Mr. Jones put his parent company, Free Speech Systems, into bankruptcy. Mr. Jones claimed that a debt of $54 million owed to the company he controls had made him insolvent. But Mr. Jones' annual revenues have topped $50 million in recent years from hawking diet supplements survivalist gear and gun paraphernalia on his broadcast he also used the connecticut trial as well as a trial his past summer in texas in which he was ordered to pay two sandy hook parents about 50 million dollars to solicit donations to his legal fund and boost his product sales the sandy hook families have challenged the bankruptcy in court saying that filing is an effort to avoid paying what are mounting damaging damages awards so people have different words to say about alex jones and a lot of people want him you know off the face of the earth off off the face of the internet and that was the whole you know censorship bliss and i warned people that even if you disagree with alex jones you have to protect his right of freedom of speech because it will happen to you one day and nobody's going to be there to defend you. And the whole point of freedom of speech and something I stand uh, pointed across that I have a principled stance. I protect freedom of speech across the board. 
even if it is someone nefarious as Alex Jones or Steven Crowder or Ben Shapiro in, in cases, you know, I disagree with them. But why do they have lesser uh, value or lesser human rights than someone like me? Why why are they more uh, degenerate of their basic human rights than someone like me or someone that you disagree uh, that you agree with? That's the, kind of the whole point of freedom of speech is to protect people that you disagree from. The whole point is to protect different opinions. And uh, even if those opinions you personally find disgusting, you you have to value them and protect them as uh, as an indifference. That's kind of the principled stance of freedom of speech, the, 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 the whole point of that notion. So, but... This, you know, this is the legal way to do it. And I've been saying, I've been saying for a while now that, you know, if there is something liable that Alex Jones has said, take it to court, find a transcript, find the examples that you can show, that you can personally show that Alex Jones is held responsible. But taking away his livelihood, silencing people off the internet, taking away, you know, PayPal accounts or, uh, you know, their podcast show or not being allowed to be on Facebook or Twitter is downright awful. It's awful and revolting. And I want to throw this in too, because Kim Iverson, who I really I, I admired uh her opinions, but again, I I respect everyone's opinion. I respect people uh who, who are on the different side of me and I disagree with them. I respect them. Because they're a human being. I'm a human being. We're all human beings. We all think differently. And we need to value that and accredit the ability of freedom of speech and the accredit of having those different opinions so we can evolve from conversations, evolve from different opinions um, to discuss to one another and not be silenced out, not be threatened by, you know, the tyranny of censorship and being silenced out by the authoritarian establishment that are notorious liars. And notorious at spreading misinformation. So Kim Iverson makes an, an inter interesting point here that I want to take uh, take note of. So she says, such a dangerous president to set. One should be allowed to say that an event, any event, is fake, and should be that, and then be allowed to state their reasoning, no matter how absurd. So she's saying that in response to the New York Times uh, writing that article we just read about the $1 million uh, plaintiff deal. And then she goes on to say, are you not allowed to claim the moon landing is fake? And Neil and Buzz, uh, Neil, and, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin were actors in a Hollywood studio without being sued for defamation. So this is kind of the big picture moment of this. And people need to step away from that to maybe think about that for a second. Because I know people are cheerleading in the background saying, you know, oh, Alex Jones finally got what he got coming to him. He's a nefarious, you know, conspiracy nut and he's evil and nefarious and the things that he says are damaging and so on and so forth. But to me, even if I disagree with Alex Jones, even if I, uh, even if I agree with this verdict and you know, glad that the lawsuit, you know, played out and we actually have proof and evidence to back these claims. Even so, what's damaging is how the same tactics, the same tricks that our establishment are using to protect us from hateful speech are using that against us. And I'll, and I'll give you an example of this. You know, they're saying that Alex Jones and the stuff that he's saying about Sandy Hook are damaging. And it may be damaging to the parents. It may be damaging to the families. I don't know. I don't know the families personally. I don't know the struggles and the scenario they've had to deal with. So I'm, I'm going off their word. But to me, what's more damaging? Alex Jones versus the families of Sandy Hook? Or the fact that we had a nation a nationwide conspiracy that Iraq had WNDs that we sent troops after troops after after troops deployed people 
into the invasion of Iraq that killed millions of people. We killed millions of people, including our own soldiers, based on a conspiratorial lie of WMDs. What's more damaging? What's more damaging? The fact that Alex Jones doesn't believe that Sandy Hook doesn't exist? Or the fact that we made up a conspiracy to a national degree and, and the leaders of the White House, the administration in control, lied to the general public to make us believe that we had to go invade another country that cost millions of lives. That's where That's where this gets interesting. That's where... You have to take a moment to step outside the realms of Alex Jones. You have to take a moment. Don't even think for a second. Don't even don't even bother mentioning the name of Alex Jones. Just take take a moment for a second that an individual claims has a different opinion than the official narrative and is being sued for it and is being demonized for it and being uh basically uh, deplatformed and and dehumanized for it. What does that say? What is that tone? What does that presence say further on? And that's what Kim Iverson is pointing out here. And and this is an excellent point. This is definitely an excellent point because the same can be said about the moon landing. The same can be said about JFK. What about all the people that are, uh, you know, mentioning about the 9-11? All the 9-11 truthers out there. What about those people? Are you going to sue them now for defamation? Are you going to sue them because they don't believe the official story? Are you going to sue the people of the Holocaust that are questioning about it? Are you going to sue people for uh, the JFK assassination? Are you going to sue people for the John Lennon assassination? Are you going to sue people for anybody that they just don't believe the official story? That's where this gets dangerous. That's That's where people need to understand that, yes, it may be a win for uh, the Sandy Hook families, and yes, Alex Jones is held accountable for his actions. At the same time, though, what kind of tone, what kind of presence is this going to serve in society? Because I have a feeling this is not going to stop at just here. They're going to start going after other individuals. They're going to start going after uh, people that don't line up with the official established narrative the the official story and have concerns and have questions and have outsider opinions that can now be sued for defamation just randomly sued for defamation and ordered to pay a hard lump sum of money so that that should be said that should be questioned and at least, at least they're doing the legal president way, um, as opposed to just you know right, right being off their Twitter accounts or um, exiting them off social media or not lo- allowing them to have a voice on a platform. But that's an excellent point to be made: is what is that going to say next? Was the Alex Jones trial? What kind of tone is that going to set for the rest of the society? And that's something that should be taken away from it. Something that needs to be said. Um, Whether you agree or disagree with the outcome of the Alex Jones trial. Just think the larger picture when it comes to freedom of speech, when it comes to difference of opinion, when it comes to uh, people that are outsiders of the official narratives. What's that going to say for those people? 